Hi everybody, welcome back to another gaming video. So we've been recently taking a look at the Sega Dreamcast and games that could potentially have come out on the system. Last video, last week, we took a look at the Thomas Wave hardware. Hardware that was developed by Sammy, which is interesting because Sammy ended up acquiring Sega back in 2004. And they later worked together on the hardware bringing out some of uh, Sega properties over to the system, notably Sega Bass Fishing. So last week we took a look at uh, the first half of the uh, Thomas Wave games that came out on the system and today we'll take a look and see as far as the back half of the Thomas Wave games. So as mentioned beforehand, Thomas Wave was built based upon Sega Dreamcast hardware while the Dreamcast was built upon Sega's Naomi hardware architecture the Thomas Wave would have been an easy way for more games to come out on the Dreamcast, if only. So let's take a look at the second half of the Thomas Wave software collection to see what additional games could have come out on the Dreamcast, if only time would have been a little bit longer for the Dreamcast hardware, or if publishers would have been a little bit more willing to bring some of the software to the system. Let's take a look. All right, diving right into our first video is one that's a little different than most games I've seen, at least for this hardware, and certainly compared to with Naomi, the Karu uh, game systems, as well as Naomi 2. And this is a game by Sammy and IGS produced in 2004 called Knights of Valor, The Seven Spirits. So I'm not sure what's the best way to compare this game to. It kind of has almost like a Dynasty Warriors feel to it, a Musou style game. I think essentially like a, you know, arcade action hack and slash type, you know, gameplay with nice, you know, 2D graphics and a side-scrolling plane. Uh, certainly as far as we didn't really see anything like this really on the Dreamcast that comes to mind. Uh, you know, certainly we had 2D fighters and we expect like in the Street Fighter vein. But this looks more, kind of more like the old school Capcom days that we saw on the Saturn and in 16-bit era. So, but definitely it looks like a really neat game. I think it would have been a pretty neat addition just because we didn't have anything like it on the Dreamcast. And certainly as far as a new game would have been a great addition. Switching gears, all pun intended, ha 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 is maximum speed so this is a game that came out in 2003 by sammy and it is uh as you can probably imagine based on the name it's a racing game and just look at this screenshot for maximum speed it really has a daytona usa feel to it i think as far as they want to try to capture that daytona feel at least without having to license you know Daytona as a property just because that's something that Sega had to do back in the days so definitely making a game where you have the same sort of feel without having to worry about the additional cost of licensing can definitely de decrease the cost with regards to production and manufacturing so looking at it it looks like a really competent racer it definitely has that look and feel that we'd expect from you know the good old-fashioned Daytona but without having the Daytona name attached to it. So I think definitely as far as a licensed racer would have been a great addition. Uh, certainly we had seen in one of the prior videos, I believe on Naomi 2, uh, there was a NASCAR game that uh, Sega had worked with EA. The only time we saw them work together without having to go further back into prior console generations. So, But yeah, I think definitely some competition for, for Daytona would have been a nice addition for the system. All right, the next game is a game that I think hopefully is a lot more gratifying than what I was hoping for previously. So I had questioned whether or not Dolphin Blue on the Thomas Wave would have scratched that Metal Slug itch. However, no need to go further for Metal Slug itch than Metal Slug 6, I imagine. So this was developed back in 2005, SNK Playmore. And this is a traditional Metal Slug action game. Now, like I said beforehand, we did not get to have a traditional Metal Slug game on the Dreamcast. Certainly there's Metal Slug on Sega Saturn, you know, certainly PlayStation, there were compilations on PS2, even Xbox and such. However, Dreamcast was a lone system not to get any Metal Slug love. And certainly it could have been possible. Certainly this game was built upon Dreamcast hardware since it was made for Thomas Wave and a Thomas Wave hardware was built upon the Dreamcast architecture to keep costs low and still have a great uh, visual appeal 
that'd be uh, competent within the arcade market. So definitely looking at it, it looks like the gold fashion traditional run and gun action that Metal Slug provides with, uh, you know, I'm not necessarily sure of any innovations for this series. I'm not the most knowledgeable when it comes to the Metal Slug series, but definitely this game looks like a lot of fun. It would have been definitely something that Dreamcast would have sorely appreciated had it come out on the system. All right, more SNK Play More Love came in the form of Neo Geo Battle Coliseum. So this game came out in 2005 and certainly would have been a nice addition for the Dreamcast. I know the Dreamcast was definitely fortunate to have so many great games from SNK. We had King of Fighters games, definitely there were, I believe, four or five releases. And then there was also Last Blade 2. So definitely as far as having a plethora of quality SNK games is something that the Dreamcast is very fortunate to have. And certainly I think it would have been great to have this addition to the system. Now, this game may look pretty familiar just because for some of you, you may have imported this game or potentially picked it up domestically on various consoles that were not the Dreamcast. So it's really unfortunate that it didn't come out on Dreamcast considering the Thomas Wave and its relationship to the Dreamcast architecture. But certainly as far as I think it would have been a great addition just because, I mean, SNK, you think of fighting, you think of arcades, I mean, it goes together like peanut butter and jelly. Capcom, SNK, Sega, it's definitely all there. And so, what a next up is another interesting game, definitely a game that I would have enjoyed seeing. This was made in 2004 by Sammy. And this game is none other than Ranger Missions. So, this is definitely another gun type game. Think of House of the Dead, Confidential Mission, Death Crimson, OX. So I'm a fan of those sorts of games. I think they're perfect games for the arcades. And I think they make great additions to home consoles. So definitely as far as uh, the gameplay, the graphics, I think definitely will have held up well. And certainly there wasn't that much there on the Dreamcast to enjoy. I mean, certainly Death Crimson 2, House of Dead 2, Death Crimson OX, and you picked up the Smash Pack or import from Japan was Virtual Cop 2. So four games, it's not really a whole lot. So definitely, I think there would have been ample room to have this game added to the library. And I think it would have been a, a nice addition just because a little different. Certainly as far as, you know, it still has the same arcade shooting feel to it. Um, I definitely like the graphical effects. I like how it goes to like this wire uh, frame model after they sh they've been shot. So I think it helps as far as uh, you know identifying you know players have been eliminated and then helps for uh, a different graphical appeal. I think so. Definitely. What do you think about this game? Do you think it'll been a good addition to Dreamcast? I love the. All right, next up is a, it's a twofer, really. So this is a game series created by Sammy and Dimps together with the initial release in 2004, followed by its sequel in 2005. And this is a series called The Rumble Fish. So kind of a funny sounding name, but definitely as far as looking at the gameplay, it looks like a pretty uh, fun kind of fighting game we actually see in action. So I think definitely as far as the uh, the fighting goes, I think it would have been a great game to have for the Dreamcast library. I know definitely as far as, you know, there was question whether or not this game would find its way west, and I'm not aware of it coming out west in any shape or fashion. And possibly there's a digital release, if you know if there was a digital release, I would love to know about this. But I believe it actually did come out on a uh, console, not the Dreamcast, uh, the only in Japan. So. Certainly as far as if you are aware of this, certainly I'd love to know about it just because as far as it's a game I think, you know, Dims is well known for their fighting game prowess. So they had worked, I believe, on the Dragon Balls Z Budokai series. So they're no strangers to the arcade experience and they're no strangers to making, you know, good fighting games. So definitely as far as having yet another good fighting game to add to the Dreamcast collection, I think it's been a, a welcome addition. So and definitely as far as, you know, people might say, oh, well, Kermit, how about all these different games that look like Street Fighter, but they're not really Street Fighter. Do you really need them? And I think certainly as far as having some variety, I think would only add to it. So... You know, I think as far as the game must have done well enough because they made one and then they decided to make a sequel the following year with Rumblefish 2. So they must have done something right. You know, certainly the first game looked like it was a competent fighter. And I can only imagine that with the sequel, 
it would have been you know even better certainly potentially better graphics a larger character roster so definitely as far as you know the characters i think certainly kind of have a kind of a goofy look to them um you know nothing wrong with it i think definitely it's not necessarily your traditional um street fire you know cast of characters perhaps something more in the line of something more like guilty gear or dark stalkers like so i don't know certainly as far as you know i like some variety with my fighters so i think it definitely would have been a neat addition just because i definitely enjoy having some uh you know some different games to play besides the typical street fighter type action so you know certainly as far as that goes i think it'll been a pretty uh, interesting addition so what do you think let's take a look to see i mean as far as the character roster looks like there's about 12 fighters maybe there's a additional 13th and perhaps some hidden ones you know not necessarily the deepest of character rosters when you compare things like capcom versus smk capcom versus smk2 marvel versus capcom so certainly those were a lot deeper but when you're starting off with a brand new fighting game franchise it's not like you have a lot to draw from other than whatever you had in your prequels so you know overall i think you know graphically i think it definitely looks comparable to its initial release maybe a little bit nicer and i think definitely with you know gameplay goes i think it has some nice effects so i think it would have been a great addition for the dreamcast library it's just unfortunate that we'll never get to see it all right keeping with the same fighting mechanics we've been dealing with for the last few games is uh, samurai showdown 6. so this is a game that came out around the same time in 2005 SNK play more release, so you know they're great 2D fighter. So certainly as far as the Samurai Showdown franchise is one that completely bypassed the Dreamcast. There were so many releases that came out on the Saturn, but it's unfortunate based upon the timing of everything that we just missed that window. So I know definitely for the uh PlayStation 1 and the Saturn, I know they had Samurai Showdown 3 and 4. I know certainly those Samurai Showdown RPG. But unfortunately, I'm not sure if Samurai Showdown 5 had come out on the PlayStation 1 or on the Saturn. I don't believe they did, but I could be wrong. Those of you who are uh, big fans of the series, please definitely comment and let me know. But definitely this game looks like it was, you know, would have been perfect for the Dreamcast. I know certainly as far as for the Feudal J Japan look, you know, we were fortunate to have Last Blade 2. I definitely didn't, did not expect that to come out to the Dreamcast, which I think was a great addition. But definitely as far as I think definitely adding this to the library would have been a huge win. All right, this next game is actually an interesting one. This is actually a late release for the Thomas Wave. So this game came out in 2009 by Sega. And this is none other than Sega Bass Fishing Challenge. So when I first saw this game in action, I thought to myself, hey, didn't we already have Sega Bass Fishing on the Dreamcast? And so we did. We had Sega Bass Fishing 1 and 2, and that came out long beforehand. However, you know, taking a look at the graphics and so forth, Sega Bass Fishing Challenge looks very similar, but definitely there are some differences to the game that make me question whether or not was this a brand new game? Welcome was this a remaster of, of sorts? Because even looking at some of the ways they display the mechanics as far as how to reel in your fish, the... Uh, character models the the clothing and such it definitely looks different so the question is is that you know was this simply that it's a fresh coat of paint to make it look like it's a brand new game they made some mild changes or is it actually a new game altogether unfortunately i've not had a chance to play this game as far as uh in the arcades i simply was able to you know, obtain some footage and so this is one to where you know I am not certain whether or not it's essentially a new can of paint or it's a new game altogether. All right, next up is a game also developed by Sega. This came out a year beforehand from Sega Bass Fishing. And this one's called Sega Clay Shooting Challenge. So, I'm sorry, Sega Clay Challenge. So this is one to where would have come out on the Dreamcast. It's possible, certainly with the gun shooting mechanics of clay shooting, which we could be you know, comparable to, you know, shooting a weapon out of the air like in House of Dead 2. So definitely the gameplay mechanics, I'm sure, could have been copied very well. Would necessarily have garnered a release. 
I think it could definitely have come out as a budget title with a, a limited release, just because for those people who want to have that sort of arcade experience in the home, why not? Especially if it's so easy to make it for the Dreamcast, I would have seen this game as a as an easy win. Certainly, as far as you know, it's not intense as far as translation goes. It's very easy to play. Just pick up and play and shoot. It's not a deep game. You just simply, you know, point your gun and let it rip. So certainly there's a you know, variation of different modes as far as how the gameplay goes. But certainly as far as, uh, you know, the process have been one that, you know, even if the Dreamcast was still alive and doing well, it's possible this is one that we might not have actually have seen just because of, you know, maybe being too niche and such just because of it's, it's clay shooting. There's not a huge clay shooting audience out there. Uh, within the video game demographic, so I don't know. You know. For a budget release, I'd seen that for twenty dollars. Would I have picked it up? I think I would have. What do you think? So I'd love to see your comments. Tell me what you think. All right, keeping in line with Sega Clay Fishing is a semi release which came out in two thousand three, and that's Sports Shooting USA. So certainly, as far as you know, gameplay goes, this is yet another arcade Lycan shooter that I think would have been a great addition for the system. Just because, as you know, I love Lycans, and unfortunately, I think there was not enough Lycan games on the system. They didn't really get the attention I think they deserved. And I think certainly this is one that I think probably would have cared to perhaps a broader audience than just clay shooting. I mean, I'm not sure about you. I think it's fun to shoot targets, certainly from like an arcade standpoint. You know, accuracy and shooting is something that's pretty, pretty standard affair that people have interest in. There's all sorts of games of, of skill and luck that I think people look to try to uh, make use of. And I think this would have been an interesting one to see as far as is this one that we could have seen, you know, at home on the Dreamcast. And I think this is one that definitely would have had a good opportunity. So, you know, similarly, could have been a little bit too niche, perhaps. But, you know, think about it. Sega and Sammy at the time were merged by this point so 2004 was when sammy acquired sega so this is definitely a game that i think together this and sega clay challenge they could have had a two for one pack released as a budget release and they could have easily justified that you know even at a budget price point of like 20 or 30 dollars all right switching gears to another genre that we've not seen yet for this hardware at least as far as for this video this one that's actually really interested in talking about and that is a puzzle game so this is a puzzle game that was developed in 2003 by sammy it's known as sushi bar so it's really as far as the colors the premise it kind of reminds me of your standard uh columns sort of game and such so you try to match up the same design and have it disappear you know definitely these games were pretty common we saw it certainly like super puzzle fighter was a uh, a really good one from Capcom. So this is actually just really colorful, vibrant looking piece of sushi that you line up and try to match them up to try to eliminate them and you know hopefully beat your opponent who's also trying to make stacks as well. So looking at it, I mean as far as the gameplay goes, the Dreamcast did have a game similar to this. This is actually Super Puzzle Fighter 2X for matching service, a very rare expensive hard to find game that only came out in japan so unfortunately we did not get to see this game uh in the west so i think definitely this would have been a great addition to the dreamcast i think it would have been a great uh, to have to have this in the home all right our last two games i'm going to talk about them together yet yeah, another release is by snk playmore this is in 2004 and 2005 and as you can probably guess these are King of Fighters games. So the 2004 release, which we're taking a look at here for the intro, is King of Fighters Neo Wave. And it was followed up the following year by King of Fighters 11. So as I said beforehand, I really enjoyed seeing the King of Fighters games, SNK games on Dreamcast hardware. I think it was really nice to be able to see it because we were graced with so many great SNK games on the Saturn. And we were just as fortunate on the Dreamcast. And I think certainly as far as seeing this bounty of great SNK fighters on the Thomas Wave only just begs the question as far as why didn't we get this on the Dreamcast? I know some of you might be saying, 
oh, Kermit, come on. The Dreamcast was long, you know, past dead. But the reality is that this would have been a very easy port. It was based upon the Dreamcast. So certainly as far as that coming out on the Dreamcast would have been a piece of cake because a lot of the final releases, granted there were some visual novels, but some of the last ones were King of Fighters games on the Dreamcast. Certainly there were shoot 'em ups with the last release being Crows in 2007. And so definitely as far as from a time frame standpoint, this game could have easily come out on the Dreamcast, both of these games. So certainly as far as quality, software, and certainly from a sales standpoint, it's just one additional game to be released on a system that we already know was very well known for having great arcade games for the home. The Dreamcast is, you know, one of the premier systems just because it brought arcade quality to the home with no diminishing it, sometimes even having better than the arcade experience. So this would have been an equal to the arcade experience since this was based upon the Dreamcast. Certainly, if this will come out to Dreamcast, we would potentially have seen perhaps additional features, unlocking things such as uh, cinemas, additional uh, screen art, additional costumes. I think it's certainly possible. You know, we saw some of these additional features with games like from Capcom to where you can transfer your save from the arcade to uh, the home console. So definitely as far as from a straight port, if it was just been arcade mode, I think it have been a welcome addition just in and of itself. So tell me what you think. I think definitely King of Fighters, it had a good place with the Dream Pass and more additions. I think it would have been definitely welcome. So what'd you think? I know definitely looking at the software for this second half, there were several games that I thought would have been really interesting. There were lots of King of Fighters games that came out originally on the Dreamcast, and I think continuing with the King of Fighters series on the system would have been a great addition. Additionally, Metal Slug 6 I think would have been a great addition just because of the fact that the Dreamcast is the only hardware in recent memory that comes to mind as far as a home console that did not have a Metal Slug game. So those are a few that I think would have been great additions, but certainly there were several more that I think were worthy. Certainly every game on this video, for the most part, I think would have been a great addition to the Dreamcast uh, software lineup. But it's unfortunate we'll never see these games come out to the system unless there's some magical homebrew group that's working on some of this stuff to make this come to fruition. Or, you know, some sort of additional hacking and so forth. So I'm not counting on any of this happening just because it's been over 15 years. But there might be someone that has the ability to do so or has additional software uh, that they have access to, to what might see certain things come out, just like we've seen certain games that were unreleased on the Dreamcast see the light of day because of prior alpha builds or beta builds that end up getting canceled. So if you liked what you saw, go ahead and click a thumbs up. This will definitely help the channel out. We've been slowly grow growing, slowly but surely. And then certainly, you know, if you like what you see as far as certain retro uh, information, game systems, I particularly like Sega, go ahead and click the subscribe button because there will definitely be more videos in this series and take a look at other games for Sega developed in the past, such as the Saturn or the Dreamcast coming out to other systems. So thanks for stopping by. Please leave your comments. I'm always looking forward to reading the comments and learning as far as how I can make these videos better just for my own sake as far as development goes and for you, the viewer, that hopefully you enjoy watching what you see. Thanks for stopping by. I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.